Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Ramon, how are you today? Today's video is going to be talking about a brand new mineral sunscreen and that's going to be the Kinship Probiotic Moisturizing Sunscreen Zinc Oxide Broad Spectrum SPF 32. So what this is advertising to be is a sheer reef safe, non-white cast mineral sunscreen for a sensitive acne prone skin. And looking at some of the claims online, it's claiming to be lightweight and non-greasy while being easy to rub in, protecting and moisturizing the skin to feel as if there's nothing there, and giving you a matte, smooth, and blurred finish, all while giving you a very faint vanilla slash turmeric smell without the gross sunscreen smell. And that's just due to some of the natural ingredients in the formulation. This is fragrance-free, vegan, and I believe Kinship is more like an independent skincare company. Before we get into it, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, fancy-related content on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And down below, have you tried this? Or more so, have you seen people online talk about this? Because I've seen a lot of buzz about this on my social media circles. I've seen a lot of creators of varying skin tones have varying experiences with this. So I'm very interested in trying this. Full disclaimer, this was actually sent to me by Kinship. They reached out to me via email and they were like, hey, we've been watching your sunscreen series. We really, really like the way that you do your mineral sunscreen reviews and the testing that you put them through. And we just wanted to get some of your feedback. Is it okay if we send you product? And so understand this product was gifted to me, but as with all my mineral sunscreen filters, Everything's gonna be on full display on camera. So you're gonna be able to tell what the real situation is, what the truths are. I'm not gonna be biased in any way, shape or form just because this is free. Science is science. This is not paid and I'm not sponsored. So let's expand a little bit on the online claims. Again, this is a 1.75 fluid ounces, AKA 50 grams, not milliliters, for $25 on Kinship's website. I don't know if they're sold anywhere in stores just yet. Again, I feel like they're more like an indie company. They've won a few awards from Cosmo and Birdie as being best SPF. And honestly, again, I've seen some really good claims on this from a lot of creators of color, specifically, I believe Fumi Monet is one of the creators I saw try this on and really, really like this. This disappeared into her skin. And if you haven't followed Fumi, she has really beautiful, rich skin. I've also seen State of Kate talk about this and really like this formula as well. So I'm excited. So some of the ingredient claims, it says 22.4% non-nano zinc oxide, which they're saying is gentle to skin mineral sunscreen that provides UVA and UVB sun protection. So it is very broad spectrum. As such a high concentration in the formula, you are getting very, very decent, very photostable, broad spectrum protection. It has turmeric, which is a superfood that soothes, helps protect and helps to improve appearance of damaged skin, which is a fact. Turmeric is an anti-inflammatory ingredient that's also antimicrobial has some sebum controlling properties and is brightening to the skin. Their other main ingredient claim from the company is their Kin Biome, which is a plant-based probiotic that supports clear skin and strong skin barrier. And looking at the ingredient claims, this is a lactobacillus ferment, which is really, really good for the skin. This does help to control some of the good bacteria on the skin, which on the one hand helps to kind of really strengthen and support a healthy skin barrier. And on the other hand, it helps to prevent acne and kind of control breakouts on the skin. So looking at the formulation, some other ingredients that Kinship themselves didn't necessarily highlight that I do. First and foremost, there's two variations on licorice root. There's licorice root extract as well as another variation from licorice. I personally love licorice root extract in formulations primarily for its brightening properties, but there are other things that it does that lend itself nicely to the formulation as well. Primarily it's anti-inflammatory, it's even controlling properties and antimicrobial properties, which go along with the claims that Kinship makes about this being really good for blemish prone skin. Also there's glycerin and aloe leaf, both of which are really great humectants, but aloe is also another anti-inflammatory ingredient. You also have tocopherol, which is an amazing antioxidant, but also is an ingredient that helps to boost a little bit of the UVB protection properties of a sunscreen. And then you also have apple fruit extract. And apple fruit extract is extract of an apple. There's a couple of different ways that works in skincare due to both the sugars and the acids in the apple. Primarily the sugars give a lot of humectant, moisturizing, anti-inflammatory properties. Then you have the acids, which give you some brightening, some gentle exfoliation, as well as antimicrobial properties as well. And then also there's a lot of coconut derived ingredients, which essentially just kind of help to condition, give emollient properties to the skin, as well as some skin nourishing benefits as well. So overall, what you're getting out of this formulation is a lot of anti-inflammatory, a lot of skin soothing ingredients, and a lot of ingredients that are gonna be good at controlling sebum and having antimicrobial, AKA anti-acne properties as well. What I'm seeing is that there's a good amount of humectants and emollients. So I'm interested to see what the texture of this is gonna be and how it's gonna wear in my wear tests. If you haven't seen my mineral sunscreen reviews, I do a rubric called the four Bs, which stands for beard, beading, beat, and brown skin friendly. Beard, how it wears in the facial hair, eyebrows, hairline. Beading, how it plays with different skincare underneath it. Is it going to pill? Is it gonna be weird texture? Is it gonna ball up? Beat. Uh, where's the makeup? How is it going to prep the skin for makeup? How is makeup going to apply on top of it? And how is it going to affect the overall wear of makeup throughout the day? And brown skin friendly. 
Is there a white cast? And if so, up to what degree is it going to be good for in brown skin? What kind of brown skin is it going to be best for? For the four day wear test I'm going to do for the sunscreen, I'm going to be adjusting the variables of skincare underneath, as well as the variables of makeup on top, just to play around with the different variables and see how the sunscreen acts and how it behaves. With the fourth day being no makeup on top, just the sunscreen to see how it looks and how it wears on bare skin, as well as how it reapplies on top of itself. As with all my sunscreen tests, I do a quarter teaspoon to cover my face, my ears, and my neck. So that's always going to be a constant, as well as I work it into my skin for about two to three minutes and let it sit for at least five minutes before I go on top of it with anything else to make sure it sets and forms the protective film that it needs to. So next time you see me is going to be at the end of day four where I give you my final thoughts. Stay tuned. So here we are a few days after testing the Kinship Self Reflect Probiotic Moisturizing Sunscreen and let's talk about it. I have some thoughts. Before we get into my final thoughts, I'm going to recap the last four days of testing, my thoughts through the testing and kind of explaining what each day's experiences were. Again, I did a, about a quarter teaspoon on my face, my ears and my neck, rubbed it in and then let it set for at least five minutes before going in with anything else on top of it. And the last day was nothing but sunscreen on my skin with the reapplication on top of it a few hours later. And again, those four days of testing are me really reflecting on the four B's mineral testing rubric I always do, accounting for a beard, beading, beat and brown skin friendly. Getting into day one of testing, as with all my first days for mineral sunscreens, I apply half a face worth, let it set down so that we can see after about five minutes or so, is there a white cast? When I first dispensed this into the little measuring spoon I use, I was like, okay, this is tinted. It does have a tint. My experience with tinted sunscreens is a little bit, mm. And then I applied it, and upon application, I was like, oh, this is rich. And with most richer mineral sunscreens, I've had less favorable experiences, but let it sit down, and it sat down. The white casts almost completely went away, and I was like, okay, we might have a home run with this. As you can see on the screen, I do half a face with that sunscreen, half a face with, for you to have a comparison, and you make your own judgment as to what the white cast looks like. But after that first half face application, I go in with the rest of my face, and then day one is always light skin care underneath. Since this is a probiotic moisturizing sunscreen, I replace moisturizer altogether. So just some hydrators, and this on top adds moisturizer plus sunscreen, and I went on top of it with a light beat. Day one's experience was really really good. I felt the sunscreen itself was very, very rich, but makeup was really well on top of this. I was very, very happy and very, very shocked with that result. It's a very, very emollient sunscreen, but I feel it dries down a little bit tackier. So it really gives on some makeup. Overall, day one's final results, my final thoughts on day one was that it was very rich and moisturizing. So as a result of that, I felt that my skin was a little bit greasier than normal. When I normally wear sunscreens on a daily basis, I blot throughout the day, that's not an issue for me, but just know that. As an oily skin individual, that's something I had to deal with. Day two is heavy skincare routine with a light makeup beat on top. And I do day two as a way of testing if you have a lot of emollients and creams and serums underneath the sunscreen, how is it gonna play? With some sunscreens, it has a tendency to pill and ball depending on the skincare underneath. And so that's what we're really testing with this. But this worked out really, really well. Again, with all the emollient stuff underneath it, this spread really, really nicely. Makeup applied beautifully on top. And again, greasy towards the end of the day. But if you blot normally, there's no weird issues with that. Overall, I felt that this still wore really nice overall the emollients. As an oily skin individual, I wouldn't normally wear so many serums and gel creams and moisturizers underneath this. But if you normally do, this plays really well with skincare. Day three is light skincare, full B. Foundation, concealer, bronzer, contour, blush, highlight. Full shebang. Already knowing how this played with makeup, I was like, okay, this tends to grip makeup. Makeup's gonna wear on top of this, but this gets really emollient. And generally, if I have something really, really emollient underneath makeup, I don't like that necessarily. So I decided to blot. With the blotting, I let the sunscreen set, blot off some of the excess shininess, and then go on with makeup on top of it. With day three, I also apply primer on top of this just to see. Sometimes if you apply stuff on top of sunscreen, it reactivates the sunscreen underneath. No issue. Makeup went on beautifully. I could buff, I could stipple, I could do all of this stuff. Makeup went perfectly on top of the foundation. This really works to grip makeup. It plays perfectly with a full beat. At the end of the day, I was greasy. I normally blot, but that is what it is. And then day four. Day four is the day that I do nothing but the sunscreen. So light skincare underneath, sunscreen on top, and then just wear that throughout the day with nothing on top of it. So you can see what the sunscreen looks like on bare skin. And this is really a day to test white cast, how it looks on the skin throughout the day with the more time I wear it, does a white cast subside. And again, as with all of my previous days before, I felt the white cast subsided substantially after at least five to 10 minutes. I felt it looked really, really good on my skin. It was still very, very rich. This was called self-reflect, and I feel like that reflect really has to do with there is some iridescence to the sunscreen. So my skin looks very, very radiant. Now with the reapplication, that richness, nourishing, emolliency, and radiance, it just doubles up, triples up, honestly. 
My skin looked really, really shiny. The white cast was a lot more pronounced. Yeah, it felt heavy on my skin. Because this is so emollient, I felt, I, I felt it on my skin. Not my favorite texture. So if I were to ever do this again, I would definitely blot heavily before I go in with a reapplication, but there's still the white cast issue, so. Mm. Getting into my final thoughts. Again, Kinship reached out to me and they were like, hey, we like your sunscreen reviews. We would love to send you our sunscreen just to hear what you think about it, just to get some feedback from you. We've heard some very good and some not very good stuff, but we'd like to hear what you think. And, and I can honestly say Kinship is the first and only brand that has outwardly reached out to me to send me a product like this for a sunscreen review. And they were just very, very honest about being like, we just like your feedback, good or bad. We wanna hear what you have to say. And I have to commend them for that because that is brave. They were very confident by doing that and I have a lot of respect for them just for reaching out to me. So thank you, Kinship. But just because I got it for free does not mean that I'm gonna give it a great review. Not only that, but everything that you see on screen is very objective. If it has a white cast, if it doesn't look good, you're gonna see it. So let's first touch on the four Bs again. Beard, beating, beat, brown skin friendly. Beard. This works decently into my hairline and my beard line. I have to really rub it. I don't have any negative issues with eyebrows or mustache, but as with all my sunscreens, sunscreen, that's always the beard. That's the worst part. This didn't look amazing in the beard, especially in natural light. Here in the UK, it's real gray outside, which gives you really harsh blue natural light. And my boyfriend was like, I see it in your beard. Hairline wise, uh, for day four, when I did no makeup, just sunscreen, I bronzed my hairline pretty substantially just to minimize that because I had to go out into the real world, but it's okay. Not the best. Going to beading. Because this is rich in moisturizing, this works really well as a moisturizer. On top of that, it works really well on top of other moisturizers. So if you put a lot of serums, moisturizers, creams underneath this, it's gonna work well on top of it. If you have oily skin though, just realize because this is so emollient, you will end up more greasy than normal. Just putting that out there. But no weird texture, no weird balling up or pilling. Beat, how it plays with makeup. This is emollient and as a moisturizer, sunscreen, if I were to just put this on top of hydrators, this preps my skin beautifully for makeup. Not only that, the way it sets down into the skin, it has a semi tacky finish to it. It's not like sticky, but it grabs onto makeup really, really well. I was very shocked. So light beat, full beat, makeup played well with this. This just let the makeup wear beautifully throughout the day. If you blot normally, like I do throughout the day, your makeup will be fine. Even without blotting, I didn't have any weird breaking up or anything on my skin. It just left me greasier than normal, so. This is really great for prepping skin for makeup. Just know that. And this is tinted. This is what it looks like on my skin. Breaking this in though, the tint is not very, very opaque. It's not like the Australian gold. It's not like the Cerave. The tint is just to kind of camouflage the filters on the skin, but it's a really, really nice tint and it does not alter the way the foundation looks on the skin as well. That's some issues that I have with mineral sunscreens and makeup. Sometimes the white cast shows through no matter what the coverage is. And last note, brown skin friendly. I'm torn and here's why i felt this looked actually really decent on my skin if it wasn't for the weird hairline thing you wouldn't be able to clock it necessarily depending on how i wore it throughout the day it was okay going off of other people's experiences as someone who's very in the middle when it comes to skin tone i always love to pull from deeper skin references my friends on youtube and instagram even their experiences have been very very polar going off of my friends gabby skin and fumi monet they love this sunscreen they have beautiful rich skin and especially Fumi Monet, I watched her Instagram story where she buffed it into her skin, let it head down, and it was invisible. Gabby skin, same thing. Then I have friends like Glow Skin Guy, AKA Rishon on Instagram. He did not have the best experiences with this. So this is brown skin friendly to a very, very wide degree, especially if you have deeper, darker skin, for the most part, you'll be okay. What I think it comes down to is skin type. If you have drier skin, this would be perfect for you. This would work beautifully for you. If you have more oily skin, like I do, you might have an issue with this setting into your skin nicely and those filters really dissipating. So I would say yes, it's brown skin friendly. Getting into my final thoughts. This is very emollient. I have oily acne prone skin. I love radiant skin. I don't necessarily like a lot of matte on my face, but that's something you have to think about when you're wearing stuff throughout the day, but also depending on what condition you're in. If you're in something that's really, really hot and muggy, that's not the best texture. What I will say is that while this is emollient, this is not as negative as my experience with a Cerave sunscreen or with the First Aid Beauty sunscreen. Those were greasy and emollient and they never set. This actually sets down pretty nicely. It leaves my skin radiant, but it's not slip slidey. This sets down beautifully, like to a nice finish on the face. Going off the claims just from the name of this, this is very moisturizing. As an oily skin individual, I would just put this on top of a couple hydrators and be good for the day. Just so you can see, this is what it looks like on my hand. You can see it's got a little bit of shine and radiance to it. 
what it looks like on my fingers. It's got some shine radiance to it. This is a very brilliant sunscreen. It's not greasy though. My experience with the Biosan sunscreen, a little bit with the pipette, those were greasy. I don't find this as greasy. It's just, it's a rich moisturizer texture. If you do have dry skin though, this will pair very beautifully on top of other moisturizers. So just know that. My other deal with this, it is radiant. I'm not negating the claims that they make that this is specifically for blemish prone skin, but the texture of this is really, really rich. So if you have oily skin, sometimes this kind of texture is not the best. It can kind of be a little bit heavy and clogging for the skin, but I also feel like there's a little bit of radiance to this in terms of like, there might be actual pigments in this that give it a little bit more of an iridescence. I don't know what that's all about necessarily, but it does leave you very, very radiant. So keep that in mind. Going off the tint, there is iron oxide in this. And that's just again, to camouflage the whiteness from the filter that's in this, the zinc oxide. It doesn't leave you sparkly, don't get me wrong, but there is a tint to this and that is from the iron oxide. I don't know if they also contribute to the iridescence that I feel from this. What I will say is that it does leave a ring around your collar. So it's not my favorite for around the neck either. It did stain my collar. So this is just strictly gonna be a face and ear sunscreen. Let's revisit some of the claims the sunscreen makes. First and foremost, sheer. Sheer can mean a lot of things from sunscreens and I, need, I like brands to be a little more specific with it. Is it technically lightweight on the skin? For the most part, yeah, it's not really, really heavy, but it's emollient. And so that richness on an oily skin individual, especially as the day progresses and your oils build up, you could feel it on your skin. That's not my favorite sensation necessarily, but if you blot, that takes the experience from like a six and a half to like at least an eight. So just know that. It's technically sheer, especially with how it looks on the skin. So that's really good too. Next, blends effortlessly. Again, I've used this with a full range of skincare from just a couple of hydrators to a full skincare routine underneath. And what I will say is that this doesn't require a whole lot of elbow grease to work in, but you do really have to work to blend it into your skin. I'm really just used to my chemical sunscreens. I can lather on a really sloppy layer and after a few minutes, it's all set in by itself. With this one, you actually have to work it into your skin a little bit. But that being said, you don't have to work it in for a very, very long time. I feel after at least two to three minutes, it's worked in pretty, pretty well. And then again, if you let it sit for at least five minutes, I think seven minutes is a pretty good time frame. It's pretty much gone on the skin. So this does a lot of the work by itself, but you do have to kind of work it in and blend it in just so it's not sus. And then revisiting the brown skin friendly claims for the creators that I'm referencing as the ones who've used this, I'll try to leave links down below for you to go back and look at their own posts and their own content to see how you feel about it. Again, skin type is a really big indicator as to how some sunscreens work. For example, if something's a little bit more rich in emollient or oil-based on my oily skin, those don't set down that well. Therefore, I don't feel the pigments themselves set down very well into my skin. And those leave me with a little bit more of a white cast. Whereas if you have drier skin, these more emollient, rich, nourishing, moisturizing sunscreens set in really, really nicely. And those filters usually substantially disappear. So if you have more oily skin, I would still give this a shot, but just know that it might not be the best for you. But if you have drier skin and deeper skin, this could be a home run for you. On top of that, if you're more fair, uh, the tint for this being not too opaque will work nicely into more fair skin. My friend State of Kate, who I'll also leave her down below, she's here on YouTube as well. She loves this sunscreen. It's one of her favorites. It's invisible on her skin tone. So this works great for all skin tones, most skin types. Stop, is this worth it? I say for the most part, yes. Again, it's only SPF 32, but here's the deal. You can actually wear a pretty good substantial amount of this and it sets into the skin really, really nicely. It's also a really high percentage of zinc. So you're gonna get really adequate broad spectrum protection. With everything else in the formulation of this, I would not argue that this is actually really good for blemish prone skin, even if it is a little bit more rich and nourishing. You have a lot of really great ingredients to help target specific causes of acne and breakouts, help balance the skin out. But on top of that, you're just getting a lot of really other great ingredients for the skin, like again, licorice roots, tocophera, the apple fruit extracts, the turmeric. Overall, I think this has a nice formulation to it as well. For the price point, it's $25. Again, if it's gonna be a sunscreen that you're gonna actually like to wear if you wear enough of it, and this works into the skin really, really nicely, even for more dark, deep skin tones, I would say the price point is worth it. And again, the way this preps skin for makeup, that's actually what I was most shocked by. It really just clung onto the foundation, held it on all day. If you blot continuously throughout the day, you're gonna be golden. So it's just remote recommended. I would say yes, mainly counting for the fact that I have a lot of other deep skin creators who I know really, really like this. Therefore, I would count this as at least 85 to 95% brown skin friendly. I'll leave those again in the description box if you want references to look at. Thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, fancy related content on my channel. Question for you guys, let me know down below. Kinship along with just this, ask me what else I'd wanna try from the brand. So I have a couple other products that I could talk about that I've been using for at least the last month now that I have some pretty good thoughts on. Would you wanna see more of like a kinship, like semi-full brand review? Let me know. Thanks for watching guys.